time for a special presentation of Central Illinois Sports as we follow the Griggsville Perry Eagles on their track for a state championship. We couldn't have this game without these important sponsors. Teddy's Bar and Grill, Waters Concrete, Dot Foods Incorporated, Gianni's Pizza, Musgrave Angus Premium Beef, Lipcomen Insurance, Lipcomen Seed Sales, the City of Griggsville, the Griggsville Bus Service, Farmers State Bank, Wildcat Car Wash, Gina, Corey, and Mariska Sherman, and Dalton Two, Midwest Snowy, Integrity Investments, Andy Henry, Damon Emmerich, Great Rivers Bank, Rumors Have It, A&D Builders, Anthony and Afton Bar Eyes, DNL Project Management, Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, Beard Implement Company, the East Pike Lending Library. Now let's head courtside to the guys in this important broadcast of Griggsville Perry Eagles Trek to the State Tournament. And good evening, everyone. It's state basketball action on the IESA Network with Central Illinois Sports. John Hull along with myself, Jack Hull, and Jacob Hull running the camera tonight. That's right. The three triplet Hull boys are here in East Peoria, and we're glad you've joined us tonight. East Peoria Central Junior High School is the host. We were here on Saturday for the Griggsville Perry Eagles games, and we're here again tonight for the third and fourth place action. This is the Great Rivers Bank pregame show with locations in Pittsfield, Barry, and Liberty. Here to help you with your lending and personal banking needs, our friendly service and dedicated loan officers can help you through buying a home, opening a business, or making a deposit. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. The Griggsville Perry Eagles will be taking on Danville Slurman this evening in action. They're the Hilltoppers, and we'll tell you a little bit more about both teams on the pregame show when we come back. But right now, we take a break. We'll come back with more on the pregame show. It's IESA final day, and we'll have both games tonight. Hope you'll stay tuned for more. When you have a financial question or ideas, you need someone to listen. A professional can listen and help provide insight. Andy Henry of Integrity Investments and Financial Services in Pittsfield can assist you to evaluate your long-term investment and retirement planning approach. Call Andy today to schedule a time to discuss your financial planning and strategy at 217-285-6441. That's 217-285-6441 for Andy Henry and Integrity Investments and and financial services. DNL Project Management is a licensed, bonded, and insured roofing company owned by Darren Workman. We specialize in all types of roofing from shingles, metal roofs, commercial, industrial, and residential roofing. Book your roof project early before the price increase hits. Call 217 371 2760 or find us on Facebook as well. DNL Project Management riffing their way on top of your home or business to 17371-2760. A&D Builders, owned and operated by Anthony and Afton Barreyes, is located in Barry, Illinois. They specialize in building homes in Pike County and the eastern Missouri Hannibal area. A&D focus on new builds but offer remodels, including siding and room remodels. They also offer creative home designs where they draft custom homes. In addition, they do in-ground pool installation. While others are two to three years out, call A&D and you will see they can get to your project right away. Phone 217-440-5930 for A&D Building making your dreams real for you. Farmers, are you looking for high-yield genetics to help the bottom line on your farm? Contact Lipcomb Seed Sales for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. We have the luxury right now to be offering the highest-yielding soybean lineup Pioneer has offered in 30 years. Couple that with the service that is second to none, and you have a winning combination for your farm. For corn, check out the results of the National Corn Growers Yield Contact and see who's at the top. Maybe today is a good day to revisit Pioneer corn hybrids as well. Contact Aaron, Evan, and Brett today for high-yielding A-Series soybeans for Pioneer. Welcome back on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. If you're in the market for a new home loan, talk to the experts at Great Rivers Bank with locations in Barrie, Pittsfield, and Liberty. Here to serve the entire region and beyond, check out our online loan applications at greatriversbank.bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Well, Saturday's action looked like this. Peoria Limestone Walters, who came into the tournament with a 19-4 record, defeated Ottawa Marquette in the quarterfinals 50-34. Then Effingham Saint Sacred Heart, who was 19-2, took on the Griggsville Perry Eagles. The Eagles came in at 18-5 on the season. 
and the Eagles came away with a 42-26 win in that game. Then Danville Slarman would defeat Gifford by a score of 31-23. The final game of the day in the first round action saw Springfield Christ the King, who's 24-2, defeated Peoria, uh, Peru Catholic, I should say, 43-19. Then we turned around and played the semifinals. Peoria Limestone Walters defeated Grigsville Perry 43 43- 33 in a game where each team made nine three-pointers in the game. In fact, Limestone led that game 20 to three before the Eagles would cut it to five and had a chance to get closer than that on a three-pointer that was waved away that might have been good. Danville Slarman took on Springfield Christ the King in the second semifinal game, and it was Springfield Christ the King with a 52-26 win. That's how we get to this third and fourth place game that will have the Eagles of Grigsville Perry 19-7 and taking on Danville Slarman, and they are coming in with a record of 13-6. and They are the Hilltoppers. We'll also have the championship game tonight between uh, Limestone Walters of Peoria and Springfield Christ the King, thanks to some sponsors from Springfield and Christ the King. We'll tell you about them in our second contest. One of the people I want to tell you about is Derek Despain, your LG seed dealer. He is so proud of the Eagles. What a great season and a great job getting to the state tournament again. They are proud of you. And J.K. Woodshop and Taxidermy, specializing in custom-made display cabinets, most items made from wood, also European mounted skulls. That's Jeff Caspery in Liberty. Call 217-440-8900. If you'd like to have replica trophies of the tournament, you can call Jeff, and we'll tell you more about that later in the broadcast. The Great Rivers Bank pregame show, the Eagles of Grigsville Perry, and the Hilltoppers of Danville Slarman. More comes your way on the pregame show after these. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting, so it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit, so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. No matter who wins today, you can be on the winning team. Discover a job where your pay, job security, and safety are our top priorities. At DOT, our material handlers and drivers earn some of the best money in the market. Plus, we top that off with goal-based pay opportunities, profit sharing, vacation time, 401k matching, and more. Make your fantasy team a reality. Join DOT today. Midwest Snowy, your locally owned shaved ice business, is looking forward to seeing all of our loyal customers this summer. Come try one or all of our over 30 flavors, including sugar-free and the Snowy Natural line, which has no artificial dyes or flavoring. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages to see our schedule. If you want to see us at your event, message us on Facebook or contact us at 217-730-8886. When the weather gets hot, come see us at Midwest Snowy. The cool part of summer. Back on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show on Central Illinois Sports Live on YouTube. Glad you've joined us tonight. John Hull, myself, Jack Hull, and Jacob Hull over on the uh, side there, man in the camera. And all three of our our middle names are Cyrus, so we're the Cyrus triplets tonight. John, glad you've joined us for the broadcast. One of our network sponsors tonight is Waters Concrete. Tim Waters offers quality concrete for your new builds, driveways, sidewalks, decorative patios, and anything with concrete. Waters Concrete, ready to serve you, thanks to Tim and the gang, 309-252-1052. Well, it'll be a tough game tonight for both of these squads trying to get that third-place trophy. And if you wonder if it means something, you bet it does. These two teams have made the trip back here to play because it's important. They know they're going home with hardware, but they'd like to have the third-place trophy instead of the fourth. And, of course, the two teams playing for the championship tonight both want to get that crown also. But, you know, the nice thing about being in seventh grade Win or lose, you're going to get to play in eighth grade and all the way through high school, and it'll be a great thing for you. And the other break is you don't have to wear a Cub shirt like that one across the way there. Ooh, isn't that the nasty-looking thing? Oh, wow. Must be a lot of Cub fans around the area. You never know about that. But, uh, hey, it's the way things go. Grigsville Perry with their uh, head coach in Matt Hansen, assisted by Ian Smith. 
come in with a record of 19 and 7 and we'll be sure and tell you about their lineup we haven't seen either team on the floor yet and we're kind of late getting started is it six minutes till six and this game was slated to start I do believe at six o'clock this evening don't know why they haven't started to warm up yet but I hope they do in a little bit a long trip home after the second game this evening Danville Slarman's Hilltoppers OJ Harrison is their head coach Keith Peebles, Jerry O'Neill, and Bob Lehman are some of their coaches, and we'll tell you about both of those lineups in just a little while. Hey, Trash Queen is our scoreboard sponsor. Without them, you wouldn't know what the score was. And if you want to know the score of picking up trash, it's serving Pike, Adams, Scott, and Morgan County residential, commercial, and roll-off service. 10, 15, and 20-yard roll-off containers. It's the Trash Queen, 217-320-4320. Well, we got started in what we thought was a good uh, vibe, but a little bit longer pregame show than we even planned, and we hope they get things rolling in just a little while. We'll take a break on the pregame show. We'll come back and tell you more. Griggsville Perry and Danville Slarman, third and fourth place action. We'll be back with more after these. More delicious, authentic Italian pizza and pasta, it's Gianni's Pizza on the square in Pittsfield. From delicious appetizers to a wide selection of specialty pizzas and pastas, Gianni's has something everyone will enjoy. Take advantage of the Gianni's Pizza Special, where you can order any extra-large pizza and receive a free, small, one-topping pizza. For carryout or delivery, call 285-4002. That's 285-4002 for Gianni's Pizza on the Square in Pittsfield. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer is excited to support this broadcast of State Tournament Action. Representative Davidsmeyer is honored to serve our area as your state representative. He cares about the people in his district and works hard to hear your voice. C.D. welcomes you to reach his office in Jacksonville at 325 West State Street or give him a call at 217-243-6221. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer wishing you good luck in your run to the title. Paid for by C.D. Davidsmeyer for re-election to the Illinois legislature. The East Pike Lending Library is the little gold mine in Detroit, Illinois that you may not know about. They offer free, yes, free books for your pleasure. East Pike Lending Library is funded by area donations from friends. There's no charge ever for you to take a book and enjoy it. Presently, they are not taking book donations as they are blessed with way too many books. That means you need to stop by soon. The East Pike Lending Library is run by volunteers, and that just might be you. Come in as a stranger, leave as a friend at the East Pike Lending Library in Detroit. Musgrave Angus Premium Beef would like to congratulate the Griggsville Perry Eagles and their coach Matt Henson for their trip to the state tournament. Musgrave Angus provides premium beef that is locally raised. You can buy it at one of our three locations in Pittsfield, Haymakers, Roots Market, or Pike County Mercantile. It's Musgrave beef. Can you taste it? It's delicious Musgrave premium beef. Welcome back on the pregame show. And we did get an on the uh, Scott Spot recording of uh, one of the people here letting us know about what happened. Griggsville Perry's bus apparently was in a little altercation. They're fine, but it caused the bus to be a little bit uh, late. We heard it was somebody from Danville Slarman to put a roadblock up, but we can't confirm that. Uh, but the lady who they thought did it is already here in the stand, so we know she didn't do it. But that's a good. That's the good news tonight is everybody's okay, but we're going to get a little bit of a later start. But that's all right. We're going to have all the teams here, and we're going to broadcast a couple of basketball games for you this evening. Want to tell you about Illini Express here to serve you with walk-in medical care when you need it. Open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Every Monday through Saturday, Illini Express sees patients ages 18 months and older. No appointment necessary. Learn more about the services offered at Illini Express by visiting IlliniHospital.org. <clears throat> so the uh, cheerleaders from Greensville Perry here, the players are in the locker room getting suited up. In fact, those are Danville's players. Those are Danville. Blue. I, I thought, well, Danville, why aren't you dressed? But uh, they are ready to go. No, I think those are. Those could be Danville's eighth grade I players, maybe. I think those are limestones. Oh, those could, it could be. Yeah, John, I, I think he gave us bad I lied advice to you. again. I'm sorry. Hey, we can tell you a good one, though. The Picket Fence and Angela Dunham Burbridge, they're open at uh, the Pittsfield location on Washington Street, 1275 West Washington, 10 to 5, Tuesday through Friday, Saturday 10 to 2. Facebook, Picket Fence, and you'll find out lots more. Antiques, gifts, collectibles, primitives. Handmade odds and ends and over 30 booze. You can reach them at 217-285-1491 for the picket fence. 
in Pittsfield. And the Moose Lodge 420. Check out the Friday meals at the Moose Lodge 420 in Pittsfield. New specials each week. The food is hot. The drinks are cold at the Moose Lodge 420. And, boy, John, I'm glad you got us on the air just a little bit early so we can have this 30-minute pregame show. We had no idea there was going to be a delay in the start tonight. But it's going to be Grigsville Perry and Danville Slarman. Don't worry, sponsors. We'll play your spots three or four times tonight, and you'll get lots of coverage for us. Don't forget about J.K. Woodshop and Taxidermy, Jeff Caspery. Write down this phone number, 217-440-8900. They make replica trophies for each individual player and coaches on the team, and uh, you can be able to purchase those from them. They'll get them done in about three weeks, and that'll be a great memory of the state tournament. Grigsville Perry, 19-7. Danville Slarman, 13-6. We await their arrival on the court here on Central Illinois Sports. Stay tuned. We'll be telling you about the pregame show in just a couple minutes. Wish you had extra cash for a vacation, a boat, a new car, projects around the house. Free up more cash for the things you want by taking advantage of low interest rates. Refinance your home with Great Rivers Bank and keep more of your money by lowering your monthly payment. Start the process online at greatriversbank.bank and work with one of our experienced loan officers to get the lowest rate possible. Great Rivers Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Hi, I'm Barry Wearies. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here at Blessing. In the dream world, I would have loved to have been a Major League Baseball player. <laughs> this job has been so satisfying. When I do a total knee or a total hip replacement on a patient, it is so fulfilling to improve their quality of life. They can do things Wildcat now that they couldn't do before the surgery. And when they're in the office and they're very appreciative, it makes me feel that I'm doing uh, the Lord's work. Wildcat Car Wash in Barry and the Sherman family, Mariska, Dalton, Gina, and Corey Sherman would like to wish the Eagles good luck in the state tournament. They've made several updates and upgrades with the car wash and more to come. If you'll download the Touch 4 Wash app or your first wash, it will be free. From the Tri-State Car Wash and Wildcat Car Wash in Barry, call 217-407-407. 4511 for Tri-State Car Wash and the Wildcat Car Wash in Barry. Teddy's Bar and Grill, home of the Eagle Nest Burger in the Bird City, Griggsville, Illinois. Teddy's Bar and Grill wishes the Griggsville Perry Eagles Junior High the best of luck in your trip to the state tournament. Teddy's is located on the north side of the beautiful Griggsville Square in downtown Griggsville, Illinois. How hard can it be to find, especially when you're hungry or want some time with great friends? Stop by Teddy's Bar and Grill in Griggsville today. When you are considering a great place to raise a family, we invite you to visit the great city of Griggsville. Mayor Kent Guay and the city board want you to find out why Griggsville is a great place to live and work. Griggsville, affectionately known as the Bird City because of their love of the Purple Martins, offers great schools, beautiful parks, great access to Interstate 72, churches, businesses, and most of all, the people. Find out why Griggsville would make a great place for you to call home. Good luck, Eagles. We are proud of you. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple. Local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fmbgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville. Local people helping local people. Member FDIC. Welcome back on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. We've got your update. Aaron Rush told us what happened. The uh, bus apparently missed its turn and got up by the fast stop and uh, hit the back of a car, and they weren't allowed to move the bus, so the parents had to go pick the kids up and bring them here to the gym, but they're here fine. The bus is drivable, but they can't move it until they get all the reports done. <clears throat> so that's where we're at on that one. But we are out on the court warming up about 13 minutes away from the introduction of the players, the Star Spangled Banner, and the tip-off. In 2A action on Saturday in 7A, it was Bartonville Monroe taking on normal Metcalf. Metcalf got the win over Bartonville Monroe, 37-19. West Prairie of Colchester, who beat Brown County in the sectional, was defeated by Champaign-St. Matthews, 48-41 in overtime. 
Decatur Robertson defeated Dwight 42 to 19. And Harden Calhoun was uh, the winner over Stu Strasburg 35 to 29. Normal Metcalf got the 32 25 win over Champaign St. Matthews in the semifinal to remain undefeated. And Harden Calhoun was defeated 47 39 by an undefeated Decatur Robertson team. So Harden Calhoun is playing at 6 o'clock tonight at Macon Meridian in the game, and they're taking on Champaign St. Matthews for third and fourth place game. Metcalf will take on Decatur Robertson, two undefeated teams for the championship around 7.30. Here tonight, it's, call, it's the uh, the Grigsville Perry Eagles taking on Danville Slarman's Hilltoppers, and we'll be back to tell you the stages of getting this one all set up. Why don't you stay tuned on Central Illinois Port, Sports, call a friend or two and tell them to join the broadcast, a broadcast doubleheader tonight. We'll have more coming your way after these. Lipkin Insurance Services realize today's risk. A good risk management plan is a necessity. It takes thought and consideration in many variables that face you as a producer. No one solution can be the answer. At Lipkin Insurance Services, we have over 40 years of experience with agriculture and the problems you face. We offer a wide variety of options to help you shelter some of the risk. We understand farming. We will go over your goals and challenges as a producer and build a risk management plan that fits your operation. Contact Brett Lipkeman at 217-242-2703. Lipkeman Insurance Services, a trusted and proven provider of federal crop insurance for over 20 years. The Griggsville Bus Service takes their work seriously. Why? Because Griggsville Bus Service knows you are entrusting them with your most valuable, your children. Griggsville Bus Service is proud to provide transportation each day to and from Griggsville Perry Schools and trips to many extracurricular activities. Just like the Eagles' trip to the state tournament, find out more about Grigsville Bus Service today, making each trip the most important one yet. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting, so it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit, so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. No matter who wins today, you can be on the winning team. Discover a job where your pay, job security, and safety are our top priorities. At DOT, our material handlers and drivers earn some of the best money in the market. Plus, we top that off with gold-based pay opportunities, profit sharing, vacation time, 401k matching, and more. Make your fantasy team a reality. Join DOT today. Welcome back on the pregame show. We will be doing two games tonight because they handed us the money for the second game. All right. <laughs> and, uh, so, Charlie, don't worry. We got the cash, buddy. We'll be home about midnight tonight, I do believe. Griggsville Perry will be the home team today. They're 19 and 7, and Danville Slarman at 13 and 6 will be the visitors. As we look at Slarman on the court, John, they're not an extremely tall team, and Griggsville Perry likes to work off of pressure. Usually the height would be one of the things they'd have a little trouble with. Yeah, they do have a couple of taller young men, but not not anybody who's uh, as tall as uh, that assistant the, coach. It's about six five. Or the young man from uh, from Limestone the other night, even so. Yeah, uh, uh, Griggsville Perry. Uh, they really like to push the ball and get up, get the pressure going. Brody Rush kind of gets things going. Blake Allen, a good rebounder for the squad. Hunter Brown and uh, Kaysen Brown out front. Kaysen was able to hit some threes. All three of those guys have been in double figures throughout the postseason, and then Mario Rogers is their fifth starter. They go a little bit deeper than that as they'll bring in Aaron Kirkman part of the time and others if they need him, but they go about six deep most of the time. We'll get to know Dan Bill Slarman a little bit better in the first quarter of the game. They play six-minute quarters in the IESA, and uh, so if they have an overtime, it'd be a three-minute overtime, and naturally when you got two games, the chances of overtime – Seven. Went up to about uh, 9 out of 10 tonight, I would say, more than likely. The bus was a little late as they had a little fender bender. Everybody is just fine. Three officials working the game tonight. It's all under the auspice of the Illinois Elementary School Association. In its first year without Steve Inslee as the president, 
for some 24 years, I do believe. Coach, or uh, Mr. Inslee, if you're listening from down there in the balmy Florida area or, or Arizona or wherever you at, we hate you. No, we like him. He's a great guy, and he's enjoying his retirement. John Hull alongside Jack Hull, too, about seven and a half minutes away from the introduction. We'll take a break on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. Hope you'll stay tuned. We'll get the starting line for you in just a little while. State Bank proudly supports the communities it serves, and we wish the Grigsville Perry Eagles the best of luck in the IESA State Tournament. As the area's top-ranked Ag Bank, we are proud to serve our customers from six locations in Pittsfield, Winchester, Whitehall, Jerseyville, and Hull. Farmers State Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender, saying, Go Eagles! When you have a financial question or ideas, you need someone to listen. A professional can listen and help provide insight. Andy Henry of Integrity Investments and Financial Services in Pittsfield can assist you to evaluate your long-term investment and retirement planning approach. Call Andy today to schedule a time to discuss your financial planning and strategy at 217-285-6441. That's 217-285-6441 or Andy Henry in Integrity Investments and financial services. DNL Project Management is a licensed, bonded, and insured roofing company owned by Darren Workman. We specialize in all types of roofing from shingles, metal roofs, commercial, industrial, and residential roofing. Book your roof project early before the price increase hits. Call 217-371-2760 or find us on Facebook as well. DNL Project Management, riffing their way on top of your home or business, 217-371-2760. A&D Builders, owned and operated by Anthony and Afton Barreyes, is located in Barry, Illinois. They specialize in building homes in Pike County and the eastern Missouri Hannibal area. A&D focus on new builds but offer remodels, including siding and room remodels. They also offer creative home designs where they draft custom homes. In addition, they do in-ground pool installation. While others are two to three years out, call A&D and you will see they can get to your project right away. Phone 217-440-5930 for A&D Building making your dreams real for you. Farmers, are you looking for high-yield genetics to help the bottom line on your farm? Contact Lipkeman Seed Sales for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. We have the luxury right now to be offering the highest-yielding soybean lineup Pioneer has offered in 30 years. Couple that with the service that is second to none, and you have a winning combination for your farm. For corn, check out the results of the National Corn Growers Yield Contact and see who's at the top. Maybe today is a good day to revisit Pioneer Corn Hybrids as well. Contact Aaron, Evan, and Brett today for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. Rumors have it Bar & Grill in Griggsville is located at 115 West Quincy Street in Griggsville, of course. Locally owned and operated Monday through Thursday plus Saturday. Kitchen is open 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday an hour later till 9 and Sunday 1 to 6. Carryout is welcome. Call 217-833-2000. Mushrooms, great onion rings, jalapeno poppers, plus more. Great salads, sandwiches, hand-padded burgers, wraps, horseshoes, pulled pork. Rumors have it there's even more in Griggsville on the south side of the main drag. Welcome back on the pregame show, the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. Game one of two coming your way tonight. Tomorrow night we'll have a broadcast doubleheader as we will have games again uh, as John and I will be traveling to Liberty for Liberty and Q&D for senior night at Liberty. And on the other side of things, Charlie will have Western and Pittsfield, 4 o'clock on Saturday. Charlie and John will have the regional girls game at Boschel Gymnasium. And we'll be bringing you that action, too. want to remind you, of course, that the Calhoun Liberty game's coming up, I do believe, next week. And the Liberty-Pittsfield game will be on Thursday night since the regional will be played on Saturday. And so we'll uh, have a little bit of a difference there. And if Pittsfield girls win on Saturday, we'll be going to Roxana on Monday, they tell me, for a regional semifinal game. Tonight, it's Griggsville Perry taking on Danville Slarman in seventh grade action. And we are getting ready for the pregame festivities here. Looking forward to that. And uh, we want to let you know that we'll have the starting lineups and more coming your way in just a little while. Hope you'll stay tuned on the pregame show, the Central Illinois Sports Great Rivers Bank pregame show. We're going to take our final break before we get ready for the pregame festivities. We're back to get things rolling in this third and fourth place action after these. 
Farmers National Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple. Local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fmbgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, local people helping local people, member FDIC. For delicious, authentic Italian pizza and pasta, it's Gianni's Pizza on the Square in Pittsfield. From delicious appetizers to a wide selection of specialty pizzas and pastas, Gianni's has something everyone will enjoy. Take advantage of the Gianni's Pizza Special, where you can order any extra-large pizza and receive a free, small, one-topping pizza. For carryout or delivery, call 285-4002. That's 285-4002 for Gianni's Pizza on the Square in Pittsfield. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer is excited to support this broadcast of State Tournament Action. Representative Davidsmeyer is honored to serve our area as your state representative. He cares about the people in his district and works hard to hear your voice. C.D. welcomes you to reach his office in Jacksonville at 325 West State Street or give him a call at 217-243-6221. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer wishing you good luck in your run to the title. Paid for by C.D. Davidsmeyer for re-election to the Illinois legislature. The East Pike Lending Library is the little gold mine in Detroit, Illinois that you may not know about. They offer free, yes, free books for your pleasure. East Pike Lending Library is funded by area donations from friends. There's no charge ever for you to take a book and enjoy it. Presently, they are not taking book donations as they are blessed with way too many books. That means you need to stop by soon. The East Pike Lending Library is run by volunteers, and that just might be you. Come in as a stranger, leave as a friend at the East Pike Lending Library in Detroit. Well, we're getting things ready for the uh, National Anthem, I guess. I think they're going to play the National Anthem, the way the kids are lining up here on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. The Danville Sarman kids and the Griggsville kids are here, so what we'll do is we'll take our final break Come back with the starting laps and the play-by-play. Danville Slarman and Griggsville Perry on Central Illinois Sports. Brave Angus Premium Beef would like to congratulate the Griggsville Perry Eagles and their coach Matt Henson for their trip to the state tournament. Musgrave Angus provides premium beef that is locally raised. You can buy it at one of our three locations in Pittsfield, Haymakers, Roots Market, or Pike County Mercantile. It's Musgrave beef. Can you taste it? It's delicious Musgrave premium beef. Wildcat Car Wash in Barry and the Sherman family, Mariska, Dalton, Gina, and Corey Sherman would like to wish the Eagles good luck in the state tournament. They've made several updates and upgrades with the car wash and more to come. If you'll download the Touch 4 Wash app or your first wash, it will be free. From the Tri-State Car Wash and Wildcat Car Wash in Barrie, call 217-407-4511 for Tri-State Car Wash and the Wildcat Car Wash in Barrie. Teddy's Bar and Grill, home of the Eagle Nest Burger in the Bird City, Griggsville, Illinois. Teddy's Bar and Grill wishes the Griggsville Perry Eagles Junior High the best of luck in your trip to the state tournament. Teddy's is located on the north side of the beautiful Griggsville Square in downtown Griggsville, Illinois. How hard can it be to find, especially when you're hungry or want some time with great friends? Stop by Teddy's Bar and Grill in Griggsville today. When you are considering a great place to raise a family, we invite you to visit the great city of Griggsville. Mayor Kent Guai and the city board want you to find out why Griggsville is a great place to live and work. Griggsville, affectionately known as the Bird City because of their love of the Purple Martins, offers great schools, beautiful parks, great access to Interstate 72, churches, businesses, and most of all, the people. Find out why Griggsville would make a great place for you to call home. Good luck, Eagles. We are proud of you. Lipkin and Insurance Services realize today's risk. A good risk management plan is a necessity. It takes thought and consideration in many variables that face you as a producer. No one solution can be the answer. At Lipkin and Insurance Services, we have over 40 years of experience with agriculture and the problems you face. We offer a wide variety of options to help you shelter some of the risk. We understand farming. We will go over your goals and challenges as a producer and build a risk management plan that fits your operation. 
Contact Brett Lipkeman at 217-242-2703. Lipkeman Insurance Services, a trusted and proven provider of federal crop insurance for over 20 years. Well, about 20 minutes late from getting started here, so we had a little mishap on the way to the game. You know, they'll be telling that story. Starting lineups brought to you by LSSD Trucking and 3D Leasing, phone 285-2808. Trucking for all your needs. See the Denim Boys and their professional staff. The starters for Danville Slarman's Hilltoppers, 13-6. At a guard is a seventh grader, Black or Shaw Black. At another guard, a sixth grader is Kate Richardson. Amir Beasley will be the third guard, a sixth grader. At forward is Noah Fowler, a seventh grader. And at a fourth guard is C.J. McCulloch. He's the sixth grader. McCulloch, along with Fowler, Beasley, Richardson, and Black are the starters for Dan Bill Slarman. Clark Warren is one of the uh, people not starting, along with Brody Boyd, Adam Perez, along with Princeton Rush and Jonathan Colby. For the Grigsville Perry Eagles, Matt Hansen, her head coach, Ian Smith, the assistant, 19 and seven. Brody Rush is one guard. He is a seventh grader. At a forward is Blake Howland, a seventh grader. Hunter Brown plays a guard. He's a seventh grader. Casey Brown plays the point. He's a sixth grader. And Mario Rogers at a forward. He is a seventh grader. Rogers, Brown, Brown, Howland, and Rush. Non-starters are Hunter Stover, Landon Mason, Lucas Dehart, along with Aaron Kerfman, Eli Musgrave, Landon Shealy, Knox Dunham, Logan Sidwell, Quentin Booker, and Greg Piper. Grigsville Perry is the home team. It'll be Howland jumping for them. And on the other side, we see Beasley going into the middle. And the Slarman group will be going away from us on the far end. Grigsville Perry coming towards us on this end and we're ready for basketball action. The ball will be tipped up, and it is controlled by Grigsville Perry. Rush with the basketball into the front court, works it on the wing, gets it down to Rogers. Rogers with a little motion out to Brown. That's Kaysen Brown on the top of the key. Gets the ball down low, ball knocked away, and a turnover. Nope, recovered by Rush. He'll go to the basket and bring it back out. Hunter Brown had a touch. Now Rush strong to the bucket, up and good. And the first two points of the ball game go the way of Brody Rush. Coming the other way is McCullough, the guard. Top of the key against the double team. Ball knocked into the backcourt, but it was tipped away. McCullough still on the dribble, close to a five count. Runs into Rogers, turns around, gets the ball far side. That's to Fowler. Out top of the key to Richardson, back to McCullough. McCullough gets it back up top of the key to Richardson. Now works it right hand side to Fowler under contact. Ball knocked away. Turnover against Danville Slarman. Larceny, layup, Rush can't get it to fall. Rebound shot back up again, no good. And on the rebound, it looks like Howland's going to be called for the foul. That foul going to go against Blake Howland, his first, and the team first against Griggsville Perry. Ball out of bounds, like the court to go for Danville. GP up by two, two to nothing in the early going. And uh, we will see how things go. McCulloch looks like he's going to be the ball handler. Works off of a pick from Beasley. Now gets it to Beasley, top of the key. Works it deep in the corner on a long pass to Richardson. Richardson into the double team, drives out of it, and they're going to call a blocking foul on one of the Eagles. We'll see who that fouls on. John will tell us at the 446 mark of the first quarter. That foul also going to go against Blake Allen. That'll be his second team second. I would say he'll have to come out, and he will. He's going to sit down as Aaron Kerfman comes into the game for the first time. Inbounding the ball down low. Appears to be Shaw Black. He gets it out top of the key to Richardson. Richardson left-hand side, McCullough. McCullough with the basketball. Gets it down low to Fowler. Now they get it out back top of the key to Beasley to McCullough. 4.30 left first quarter of play. 2-0 GP in the early going. In the corner in the double team is Fowler. Trying to dribble out of it is Black. Runs it all the way down the sideline, and he'll get it back out to McCullough top of the key. 4.15 left first quarter. Little slow start here. Now Richardson gets the ball back to McCullough, top of the key. Gets it down low. That's to Amir 
Beasley, ball almost tipped away. McCulloch's got it, man-to-man -man by GP, but they're laying back a little bit. Now they get the ball back out to Fowler. Fowler gets the ball to Richardson. Richardson to Beasley. Beasley has the ball tipped away for a minute, but taken back by Richardson. Still not a shot. He'll work it back across top of the key to Shaw Black, back out to McCulloch, and they're having trouble getting the offense going at the 340 mark. McCulloch drives in, takes an extra step, and they're going to call a foul. He might have traveled ahead of time, and the foul goes against GP's Kerfman. That'll be Kerfman's first and the team third, and uh, C.J. McCulloch to the free throw line shooting two. Two-nothing the score. Gregsville Perry with the two-nothing lead. 341 to go in the first quarter play on the Trash Queen scoreboard. McCulloch shooting two. His first is up and off to the right, no good. Real Net and Twine located just north of Pittsfield across from the airport. Real Net and Twine, your local headquarters for concrete, lawn armor, statues, fountains, and more. 285-5013 across from the airport. His second is good, makes it 2-1. 2-1 in the early going here as McCulloch got the first score. Rush will get the ball in the backcourt. He'll bring it across the timeline against the man-to-man. He'll hand it off to Brown. That's Kaysen Brown. Works right side, coast to coast, puts a shot up. They're going to call an offensive foul on Brown. And I'll tell you, right off the bat, the Eagles are getting no breaks in the early going here. That's Brown's first foul, team fourth. And, uh, whew, wow. Kid was really late setting up there, and they went ahead and called the charge. Amir Beasley will inbound the ball to McCulloch. Those two do most of the ball handling. 3.20 left first quarter, 2-1 to one here. Good pitching battle. Ball taken away by Rogers, but it will be taken back by McCulloch, and now they're going to call a foul on Rush. That's Rush's first team, uh, what, fifth already? Five fouls in the first two minutes and 44 seconds against Grigsville Perry's Eagles. Not against Anvil Sarman right now. Beasley gets the ball into McCulloch. Wow. They're calling it tight here tonight in the third and fourth place game. Richardson with it, into the double team, ball knocked to the backcourt, McCulloch will run it back down, and a timeout for Danville. Timeout on the court, we'll take it to 3.04 left first quarter, 2-1 on the Trash Queen scoreboard. We're back after this. The Grigsville Bus Service takes their work seriously. Why? Because Grigsville Bus Service knows you are entrusting them with your most valuable, your children. Grigsville Bus Service is proud to provide transportation each day to and from Grigsville Perry Schools and trips to many extracurricular activities. Just like the Eagles' trip to the state tournament, find out more about Grigsville Bus Service today, making each trip the most important one yet. Farmers State Bank proudly supports the communities it serves, and we wish the Grigsville Perry Eagles the best of luck in the IESA state tournament. As the area's top-ranked ag bank, we are proud to serve our customers from six locations in Pittsfield, Winchester, Whitehall, Jerseyville, and Hull. Farmers State Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender, saying, Go Eagles! Beasley inbounds the ball to McCulloch. He'll bring it across the timeline against the man-to-man. -man. Gets it to the corner to Richardson, into the double team, and he's going to step on the baseline. Turnover number two on Danville Slarman. Big news, five fouls on GP in the early going. They'll try full court pressure. Will the squad here? They had Rush open, and now they'll get him the ball, and he'll work it into the front court against the man-to-man -man of Shaw Black. Hands it off to Brown. Brown has two hands on him by Richardson. Brown tries to work in the corner, gets it out to the other Brown boy in Hunter Brown. Now they get the ball crossed to Kaysen Brown. Now to Rush. Rush top of the key. That is to Rogers. Now gets the ball to Brown in the corner. One dribble, picks it up, needs some help. Nobody moving. Still needs help. Close to five. Should have been five. And the turnover will go against GP there first. The other way, coast to coast. McCulloch throws the ball across court. And an offensive foul on McCullough as he ran over a man. That's McCullough's first and the team first against Danville Schlarman. I'm going to be real honest with you. Yeah, I haven't right. agreed with either of those calls. It's also a turnover, the third of the ball game. And I have to tell you that uh, the same man has called all six fouls in this ball game. He's excited. Full court pressure. Grigsville Perry have a little trouble getting open. And a holding foul will go against... Who? Grigsville Perry? Yeah, that's what he called, and I'm not sure. i got to look on the board here. Same guy made the call, though. He's made them all. 
And they're going to call that against Rush. He picks up a second. Holy cow, this guy came with a whistle tonight, didn't he? He's called all the fouls, and that one was a pushing foul, I thought, against Slarman. Now ball knocked away, taken back underneath. That's Fowler with it. Haven't got a shot off. Now Beasley's got the ball, works inside with pressure, puts it up, and the first lead change of the ball game as Beasley makes the shot for his first two. 3-2 the other way. Rush the other way, and a blocking foul. Count the bucket. Rush goes coast to coast, and he'll get the and one as they regain the lead by a 4-3 to three count, does Grigsville Perry. That foul is the second against Anvil Schlarman. Foul the first against Noah Fowler. Fowler's first, team second. Free throw by Rush. Held my breath for a moment. Looking for the and one. I was afraid Rush may have picked up his third. <coughs> Not because he ran wow, over the man, but high basketball kids. shot is up and uh, short, no good. Rebound comes down to McCullough. McCullough's got the ball into the front court, working against Rush. Gets it out to, to uh, Fowler, top of the key, back to McCullough. McCulloch works it on the side. Grigsville Perry in a lot of foul trouble. Ball taken away by Brown. Turnover number four. Brown brings it across the timeline. That's Hunter Brown, tries to go towards the basket. Little off balance shot. Can't get it to fall, gets his own rebound, back up, back up and good. And Hunter Brown makes it a 6-3 ball game, which is the biggest lead of the ball game at the 125 mark of the first quarter. In the corner, Richardson with it into the double team, back out to McCulloch, top of the key. Works out of that as he looks down low, can't find Fowler, trying to go coast to coast. And they're going to call traveling against Danville Slarman. Young man, uh, luckily, went to go to that, the yeah, luckily that referee was nowhere to be found to make that call. Went to go to the basket and just uh, decided he was going to go and forgot to dribble. Five step or five turnovers already on Slarman. One ten left first quarter. Six three ball game. Rice works off the pit, splits the middle, goes strong to the bucket. Count the bucket by Rice. He's got six. Makes it eight to three and Reich will get the end one. That foul going to go against Richardson, I believe. And yep. uh, that's his first and the team third against Schlarman. Rush to the free throw line where he is 0 for 1. 8 to 3, the score 104 to go in the first quarter of play here in third and fourth place action. Rush makes the shot, makes it 9-3 on the trash clean scoreboard. 9-3, biggest score lead of the ball game. Here comes McCulloch the other way for Danville Schlarman. They've only gotten one shot off in this game. Yep, now Richardson's got it deep in the corner. They made that one on a and one situation. Now Fowler with the basketball, left hand side. Deep in the corner to Black. Back out to McCulloch, right hand side Richardson. Spot up from 12, it won't fall. Rebound comes off the other way to Richardson. Richardson top of the key to McCulloch. Now right hand side, Richardson gets it back. Back out top of the key, Fowler over to Shaw, Black, and he makes the bucket. His first two of the ball game makes it a 9-5 game on the Trash Queen scoreboard with 20 seconds left in the quarter. Grigsville Perry will hold for one. <clears throat> Up 9-5, 17, 16, 15 seconds left. Rush with the basketball, and Grigsville Perry will call the timeout. 14.3 seconds left in the quarter. 9-5, Grigsville Perry back after this. When you have a financial question or ideas, you need someone to listen. A professional can listen and help provide insight. Andy Henry of Integrity Investments and Financial Services in Pittsfield can assist you to evaluate your long-term investment and retirement planning approach. Call Andy today to schedule a time to discuss your financial planning and strategy at 217-285-6441. That's 217-285-6441 for Andy Henry and Integrity Investments and financial services. GP burned the timeout, 14.3 seconds left in the quarter, and Casey Brown's got the basketball. Out top of the key with 10, 9, 8, works it on the right side, tries to get it to Rush, Brown in a little bit of trouble, back to Rush. Rush gets it out top of the key to Brown, 2, 1, puts up a long three at the buzzer, off the back of the rim, we played one quarter, 9, 5. Griggsville Perry with the lead over Danville Slarman, second quarter play-by-play -play in a minute. DNL Project Management is a licensed, bonded, and insured roofing company owned by Darren Workman. We specialize in all types of roofing from shingles, metal roofs, commercial, industrial, and residential roofing. Book your roof project early before the price increase hits. 
Call 217-371-2760 or find us on Facebook as well. DNL Project Management, riffing their way on top of your home or business. 217-371-2760. A&D Builders, owned and operated by Anthony and Afton Barais, is located in Barry, Illinois. They specialize in building homes in Pike County and the eastern Missouri Hannibal area. A&D focus on new builds but offer remodels including siding and room remodels. They also offer creative home designs where they draft custom homes. In addition, they do in-ground pool installation. While others are two to three years out, call A&D and you will see they can get to your project right away. Phone 217-440-5930 for A&D Buildings, making your dreams real for you. Well, it's going to be Danville basketball. They trail 9-5 to five to Griggsville Perry on the Trash Queen scoreboard. And 2-3 uh, of three is Danville. They've gotten off two shots and made, or three shots. Four of eight is Griggsville Perry, but two fouls apiece on Rush and Allen. They need to be careful. With the basketball, top of the key now, Beasley. No, McCulloch is back taking care of the basketball. He'll throw it deep in the corner to Richardson. Looks down low, can't find an opening. Ball taken away by Rush. On the Larceny, the layup up and good. Rush has nine in the game, makes it an 11-5 game. At the 540 mark of the first half of play. McCulloch with it, down the corner, Richardson fakes the shot, gets into a little trouble. Now McCulloch gets the ball, tries to go to the basket, ball knocked away, on the floor, loose, a scrum for it, and the ball's knocked out by Danville Slarman. They'll turn it over for the sixth time in the ball game. I think when the young man fell down, he fell down on the baseline on that end there, and that's why it was a turnover. Casey Brown to bring it across the timeline. A little man with a great shot and a big heart. Gets it down low. That's to Brown. Hunter Brown works to the basket against Beasley. A jump ball, alternating possession. It will stay the way of Griggsville Perry. Don't forget your mic's on now, John. I, I'm aware. That's what I said. It'll stay on this end. Black into the game. Richardson sits down. Into the ball game is Adam Perez for the first time tonight. Brown gets it in, tries to get it to Rush. Ball knocked away, and it'll remain GP basketball. 5-17 left in the half, 11-5 Griggsville Perry. Tough place to inbound the ball right on the corner of that elbow. It'll be Hunter Brown inbounding. Gets it in to Rush. Rush, a little crossover dribble. He'll back it back out, reset the offense. Back, works off of a pick by Rogers. Now he'll dribble it out top of the key with five minutes left in the half. McCulloch trying to be aggressive. Working it down the corner is Rush, still on the dribble, out to Brown, three-pointer on the left side, way short, Rogers with the rebound, no, Beasley comes away with it. Beasley wants to run the other way. He runs over the top of Brown, I'm gonna call, call block. a blocking foul on Kaysen Brown, and that's gonna be his second, man, John, that was a tough Case, call. Kaysen Brown's second team, uh, what, sixth or seventh there, Jack? They call the blocking foul. Did they yep. count the bucket? Uh, no, one and one, they're saying. so. One and one in that. I'll yep. be darned. So it'll be a seventh team foul. Beasley to the free throw line to shoot the one and one. 11-5 the score. Griggsville Perry with the lead. 4.50 to go in the first quarter. Play Beasley shooting his first two free throws of the night. Looking for his first points of the night, I do believe. Yep. His first is up and uh, short, no good, and he will not get a bonus, but McCulloch gets the rebound. McCulloch with the ball on the left-hand side. He'll work it back into the middle to Beasley. Sizes things up, goes strong to the basket, up and good. Nice move by Beasley, makes it an 11-7 game, Griggsville Perry. Three guys with two fouls apiece on this two, squad. Two Kirpin, of them playing. Kirkman back in the game. Rush and Brown still on the court, Hallen out. They're called, they were calling the five second call, that guy, same guy. <laughs> wow, that wasn't even close to closely guarding. Now Perez guarding him into man to man. Rush on the dribble. Works it right side, strong to the bucket, tries to bounce it down low and they're gonna say it went off of Danville Slarman. That's a break for Griggsville Perry at the 4-11 mark of the second quarter. They lead it 11-7 on the Trash Queen scoreboard. They get it into Rush. Had a lane to break for the basket. Now goes back across the middle. Gets the ball to Kerfman. He'll pick it up, go to the dribble. Now Brown with it. Back out to Kerfman, top of the key. Wants to throw it to Rogers. Might have got by with steps. Back out to Hunter Brown. Brown out to Rush, top of the key. Under four minutes left in the half. Still in the 11-7 game. A lot of foul trouble. Griggsville Perry does not want to get in the corner. Now Rogers travels, but doesn't get called for it. Brown misses it. Beasley with the rebound. Gets it out to McCulloch, left-hand side. Coast to coast, bounces off of the man, 
Down low, missing the layup. Down low was Perez. And Brown got the rebound. Now Perez will be called for the foul, his first team fourth. As Jack told you, his first team fourth, Hunter Brown with the rebound that time. He did a good job of controlling it, and the man was right up in his grill. Now you got to be careful driving to the basket because Case and Brown and Brody Rush both with two fouls apiece. Case and Brown with the ball, top of the key. Maintains the dribble, works it right hand side, a little in out. Now back out to Rush with the left hand dribble. It's got the size advantage. Inside, long step there. A little bit of trouble, had a chance to shoot it. Deering it down. Now to Case and Brown. casey has got McCullough on him, and that's a big man guarding him. They get it out to Rush, top of the key. Three minutes left in the half, and Griggsville Perry's had the ball for a minute on this end of the court. I'm not sure with the foul trouble, I wouldn't hang out out there for a while. That's what they're looking to do, rush down low, ball tipped away, they're gonna say it went off a rush, turnover number three, <clears throat> and I'm with you, John, I'd have kept it out front, 252 left in the half. They're not coming out to guard you beyond the three point. C.J. McCulloch will bring it across the timeline on the left-hand side. Gets it out, top of the key to Fowler, down in the corner, that's to, to Black. Down low, McCulloch finds an opening, left-hand layup up and good. McCulloch has got the bucket, and they didn't even get that right. McCulloch is the man that scored that bucket. Well, they, they're calling him Harrison instead of McCulloch. Well, on here it says I understand. McCulloch, and I, I ask him, so I'll put Harrison down there too, just in case. Rodgers, one dribble, tough pass into Hunter Brown. Holds it high above his head, now to rush. Two-point ball game, GP with the lead to basketball. Spin move inside. Rush tries to put the shot up. Beasley blocks it. Beasley coast to coast the other way. Wants to take it in. Goes by everybody. Misses the layup. Rebound comes off to Rodgers. He needs to pull it back and get it to Rush, and he does. We're under two minutes left in the first half of play on Central Illinois Sports. 11-9, Griggsville Perry trying to get this third place trophy, but so are the Hilltoppers of Danville Slarman. Cason Brown on the right side gets it to Rush. Inside out, back out to Rogers, back to Rush on the right side. Little shake and bake, can't make an opening, tries to work against McCulloch. He'll get it back out to Hunter Brown. Now to Rogers, back to Hunter Brown for a three out front, and it's good. Hunter Brown hits the three, he's got five, and it's a 14 9 GP lead with 120 left in the half. McCulloch with the basketball, ball almost taken away, ball still loose, everybody going after it. It's a jump ball, and it'll remain the way of Danville Slarman on the tie-up here. Slarman will have the ball at the half-court line, but a nice job by both teams getting down the floor going after it. Beasley, Amar Beasley will take the ball out. He'll try to get it into McCulloch. McCulloch kind of limping a little bit. Hope he's okay. Kind of had a man come down on his legs maybe They've there. They've been calling him Harrison, too, and if he is Harrison, let me know. Corner, three-point shot, no good. Rebound, Rodgers gets it out. To Rush. Rush wanting to run into the front court. A little shake and bake there. Pulls it back out. Top of the key, Rogers. Corner case and Brown. Fakes the three. And now they will call a timeout for Griggsville Perry with 55 seconds left in the half. 14-9. GP with the lead will come back with the last 55 seconds after this. Farm, farmers, farmers, are you looking for high yield genetics to help the bottom line on your farm? Contact Lipkeman Seed Sales for high yielding A Series soybean from Pioneer. We have the luxury right now to be offering the highest yielding soybean lineup Pioneer has offered in 30 years. Couple that with a service that is second to none, and you have a winning combination for your farm. For corn, check out the results of the National Corn Growers Yield Contact and see who's at the top. Maybe today is a good day to revisit Pioneer corn hybrids as well. Contact Aaron, Evan, and Brett today for high yielding A Series soybean from Pioneer. Rumors have it Bar and Grill in Griggsville is located at 115 West Quincy Street in Griggsville, of course. Locally owned and operated Monday through Thursday plus Saturday. Kitchen is open 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday an hour later till 9 and Sunday 1 to 6. Carryout is welcome. Call 217-833-2000. Mushrooms, great onion rings, jalapeno poppers, plus more. Great salad, sandwiches, hand-padded burgers, wraps, horseshoes, pulled pork. Rumors have it there's even more in Griggsville on the south side of the main drag. 55.7 seconds left in the half. We'll get a, okay, we'll call him Harrison the rest of the half then. They get the ball into Rush for GP. McCulloch goes by Harrison, they say now, so we'll start calling him that instead. We want to get it right, but we just go by what the program had. Brown on the dribble, close to five. Now they'll start the count. Brown going nowhere. They get it to Rush. 
with 38 seconds left in the half. They lead 14-9 to the Grigsville Perry Eagles on the Trash Queen scoreboard. Harrison, Garden, Rush out front. Rush with two fouls already, so you don't want to pick up a charge here. Now Harrison will pick up the tempo. Rush will in and out him a little bit there with 20 seconds left in the, in the half. At the half court line, in and out again. Rush wants to keep the ball down to 14, 13, 12. Harrison 11, goes back 10. to Now Rush will start things going at the nine second mark. Strong to the basket, loses the basketball. Corner, Cason Brown bounces down to Kerfman, puts the off balance shot up, no good. Beasley on the rebound, we've reached halftime. 14-9, Grigsville Perry's Eagles lead the Danville Slarm and Hilltoppers. We have reached the Curtis Communication U.S. Cellular Halftime Show. More comes your way after these. At U.S. Cellular, we believe you should get more of the latest 5G technology for less of your hard-earned money. Right now, get up to $1,200 off any 5G phone. The choice is yours. Any of our 5G phones with no trade-in or hidden fees. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. Come check out America's locally grown wireless at U.S. Cellular. Visit Carnes Communications, a U.S. Cellular authorized agent, located at 224 East Washington Street in Pittsfield. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple. Local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fmbgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, local people helping local people, member FDI. I see. For delicious, authentic Italian pizza and pasta, it's Gianni's Pizza on the Square in Pittsfield. From delicious appetizers to a wide selection of specialty pizzas and pastas, Gianni's has something everyone will enjoy. Take advantage of the Gianni's Pizza Special, where you can order any extra-large pizza and receive a free, small, one-topping pizza. For carryout or delivery, call 285-4002. That's 285-4002 for Gianni's Pizza on the Square in Pittsfield. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer is excited to support this broadcast of State Tournament Action. Representative Davidsmeyer is honored to serve our area as your state representative. He cares about the people in his district and works hard to hear your voice. C.D. welcomes you to reach his office in Jacksonville at 325 West State Street or give him a call at 217-243-6221. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer wishing you good luck in your run to the title. Paid for by C.D. Davidsmeyer for re-election to the Illinois legislature. Welcome back on the Carnes Communication USA Cellular Halftime Show. Carnes Communication in the corner of Jackson and Washington Street right there in Pittsfield. 285-5400 for Carnes Communications bringing us our halftime score. It was 9-5 to Grigsville Perry after one quarter. We had three lead changes in the ball game early. Grigsville Perry got the lead back and they lead 14-9 here at halftime. Six turnovers on Danville Slarman. Three on Grigsville Perry. But here's the big news, a single foul on Caden Richardson from Danville, one on Adam Perez, one on Noah Fowler, and one on C.J. Harrison. On the other side, Brody Rush with two fouls, two fouls on Blake Allen, and two on Cason Brown, a single foul on Aaron Kerfman. Seven fouls all called in the first five minutes of the ball game by one official. It was interesting. We'll come back and look at individual scoring and shooting percentages on the Cardinals Communication U.S. Cellular Halftime Show. GP leads it 14-9 here at halftime over Danville Slarman. Pike Lending Library is the little gold mine in Detroit, Illinois that you may not know about. They offer free, yes, free books for your pleasure. East Pike Lending Library is funded by area donations from friends. There's no charge ever for you to take a book and enjoy it. Presently, they are not taking book donations as they are blessed with way too many books. That means you need to stop by soon. The East Pike Lending Library is run by volunteers, and that just might be you. Come in as a stranger, leave as a friend at the East Pike Lending Library in Detroit. Musgrave Angus Premium Beef would like to congratulate the Grigsville Perry Eagles and their coach Matt Henson for their trip to the state tournament. Musgrave Angus provides premium beef that is locally raised. You can buy it at one of our three locations in Pittsfield, Haymakers, Roots Market, or Pike County Mercantile. 
It's Musgrave beef. Can you taste it? It's delicious Musgrave premium beef. Wildcat Car Wash in Barry and the Sherman family, Mariska, Dalton, Gina, and Corey Sherman would like to wish the Eagles good luck in the state tournament. They've made several updates and upgrades with the car wash and more to come. If you'll download the Touch 4 Wash app or your first wash, it will be free. From the Tri-State Car Wash and Wildcat Car Wash in Barrie, call 217-407-4511 for Tri-State Car Wash and the Wildcat Car Wash in Barrie. Teddy's Bar and Grill, home of the Eagle Nest Burger in the Bird City, Griggsville, Illinois. Teddy's Bar and Grill wishes the Griggsville Perry Eagles Junior High the best of luck in your trip to the state tournament. Teddy's is located on the north side of the beautiful Griggsville Square in downtown Griggsville, Illinois. How hard can it be to find, especially when you're hungry or want some time with great friends? Stop by Teddy's Bar and Grill in Griggsville today. Welcome back on the Cards Communication U.S. Sailor Halftime Show. A 14-9 lead for Griggsville Perry, but anybody's ball game in this third and fourth place game. We'll also be bringing you the championship game between Walters Limestone of Peoria and Christ the King of Springfield. Hope you'll join us for that action also. Shooting percentages, first half, four of seven is Danville, 57%, 0 of one from the arc, 0 of one from the free throw line. Led in scoring by C.J. Harrison with three points, two apiece for Adam Perez, Amir Beasley, and Shaw Black. On the other side, Brody Rush has nine points in the first half. Five for Hunter Brown, and that's all the scoring for GP. They're six of 14, 42.8%, one of four from the arc, and one of two from the free throw line. 14-9, the halftime score, Griggsville Perry leading, and we'll be back to have the second half play-by-play -play on Central Illinois Sports, thanks to some of our network sponsors, Teddy's Bar and Grill, Waters Concrete, Dot Foods, Gianni's Pizza, Musgrave Angus, and Lipcomb and Insurance, and Lipcomb and Seed Sales. About it, productivity starts at planting, so it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit, so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. No matter who wins today, you can be on the winning team. Discover a job where your pay, job security, and safety are our top priorities. At DOT, our material handlers and drivers earn some of the best money in the market. Plus, we top that off with gold-based pay opportunities, profit sharing, vacation time, 401k matching, and more. Make your fantasy team a reality. Join DOT today. When you are considering a great place to raise a family, we invite you to visit the great city of Griggsville. Mayor Kent Guay and the city board want you to find out why Griggsville is a great place to live and work. Griggsville, affectionately known as the Bird City because of their love of the Purple Martins, offers great schools, beautiful park, great access to Interstate 72, churches, businesses, and most of all, the people. Find out why Griggsville would make a great place for you to call home. Good luck, Eagles. We are proud of you. Lipcomb and Insurance Services realize today's risk. A good risk management plan is a necessity. It takes thought and consideration in many variables that face you as a producer. No one solution can be the answer. At Lipcomb and Insurance Services, we have over 40 years of experience with agriculture and the problems you face. We offer a wide variety of options to help you shelter some of the risk. We understand farming. We will go over your goals and challenges as a producer and build a risk management plan that fits your operation. Contact Brett Lipkeman at 217-242-2703. Lipkeman Insurance Services, a trusted and proven provider of federal crop insurance for over 20 years. Welcome back on the Cards Communication USA we're Halftime Show. J.K. Woodshop in Liberty, 2301 North 900th Avenue in Liberty. Jeff Caspery is the man that takes care of your J.K. Woodshop and taxidermy, specializing in custom-made display cabinets, most items made from wood, also European-mounted skulls. 
217-440-8900. Facebook page, JK Woodshop and Taxidermy. Check them out, folks. He can also make a replica of those state tournament trophies for individuals. If you want to call him from Greenfield Perry or wherever, maybe from Danville, he can make those for you and ship them out to you. Very reasonably priced. And a great job and a great year from Derek Despain, your LG Seeds dealer. Proud of you. Thank you to Derek Despain, your LG Seed dealer. And he is so proud of the Eagles, a former Eagle and Tornado. And is it Derek that's got the free throw record for the most free throws in a row? Like 25 in a row for our uh, All-Star game? I think it might be. Don't forget about the All-Star game on March the 19th at Boschel Gymnasium. I'm sure it was game there, at Jack, but I don't remember. Well, you should remember. Should be uh, Griggsville Perry basketball, I think. They're, they yep. brought the basketball to the referee, so, so it should be theirs. We'll have Brown and Brown, Kaysen and Hunter, along with Rush. Rogers and Hallen out there on the other side. Harrison, along with Fowler, Beasley, Black, and Richardson. Griggsville Perry with a 14-9 lead, and they still got six minutes on the clock at halftime. I don't know why they're not straight. There we go. They, they put six minutes up and started the clock. 14-9, oh. Griggsville Perry with the basketball. We're underway in the second half on Central Illinois Sports. Rush with the basketball, top of the key, a light man-to-man -man by Danville Slarman. Rush works inside against the double team, brings it back out to Brown, now to Rogers. Rogers works inside, has the ball taken away. Turnover. Richardson gets the ball to Harrison, coast to coast, pulls it up, almost a double dribble, but he's able to maintain. Harrison back out top of the key. Gets it in the corner to Richardson, and the ball goes out of bounds off of Howland. It'll remain Slarman basketball. The Hilltoppers, head coach O.J. Harrison, Keith Peoples, Jerry O'Neill, and Bob Lehman. Inbounding the ball is Beasley. He'll get it into Harrison. Ball tipped away. Now Fowler's got it. He'll work it into the corner to Shaw or Black. Down low, Harrison off the window and good. Harrison up for two. He's got five. Makes it a 14-11 game. Anybody's basketball game with 5-16 left third quarter. Rush with the basketball. He'll hand it off to Kaysen Brown. Top of the key. Works off the pick from Rogers. Bounces down low. Gets the ball to Hunter Brown. Looks inside, Brown works off of a pick, gets it down low to Howland, misses the shot, and the rebound comes off to Harrison the other way. Harrison coast to coast. Extra step off the window and good. Harrison taking the game over. He's got seven, and it's a 14-13 game. Got to stop that ball penetration. Corner, Brown, three, no good, rebound. Rogers tips it back to Rush. Works inside, strong to the basket. Contact, no call. Howland puts a shot up, no call. And the ball goes out of bounds, and it goes off of Danville Slarman. Their fans wanted it to go the other way, but wouldn't you if you were sitting on this side? I don't blame it. Brown will inbound. That's Kaysen Brown. Waits we're, for a cutter. We're sitting on this side, and I wanted it to go to GP. Ball off the window. Hunter Brown can't get it to fall. Hallen had it for a minute, but Harrison's going to take it coast to coast. Rodgers cuts him off down low. Shot up by Fowler. No good. He's going to be fouled on the play. And I think Kaysen Brown will be the guilty party. We'll see what they say. That foul is going to go against Kaysen Brown. That'll be his third team first of the second half. Shooting two is Noah Fowler. It's 14-13, Griggsville Perry with the one-point lead, 426 to go in the third quarter of play on the Trash Queen scoreboard. Haven't been tied. Got a chance to be right here. And he makes the first. We're tied at 14. Fowler's first point of the night. He'll get another. Could be our fourth lead change. And his second is up, and it's no good. Rebound comes down to Howland. Howland gets the ball to Rogers. Front court, Kaysen Brown works towards the middle. Little teardrop won't fall. Rebound comes off to Harrison the other way. He's controlling the boards, and he scored seven points. In the corner with it is Shaw of our Black. In the corner now to Richardson. Richardson in and out. Gets it back to Harrison. Now to Black. Back out top of the key. Richardson works inside, a little teardrop up, and it falls through. Richardson with his first two points of the game and a 16-14 lead, fourth lead change of the ball game. This one goes the way of Danville Slarman. Under 345, left third quarter. Brown with it, right side rush. Works off of a pick. Back over to Brown, now to Rogers. Back out top of the key. Working to right, spin move inside, little teardrop up and good. We're tied at 16. Brody Rush with 11, tied at 16, second tie of the ball game. 
Here comes Harrison the other way at the 320 mark. Gets the ball to Fowler, works through the double team. Now picks up the ball and takes a step, and that'll be the seventh turnover of the ball game against Slarman. Defender Horn jumped in blows. front of him, and he uh, just took an extra step. Perez in, Richardson out. Richardson just scored his first two points of the game. 319 left third quarter. GP shooting for our fifth lead change of the ball game. Tied at 16 here on the Trash Queen scoreboard. Hunter Brown with it. Works it right side to Rush. Get it to Rogers. Cross court, Kaysen Brown. Corner, Hunter Brown for the tray. Too long. Howland and Rush fight for it. Rush comes away with the rebound. He'll work it inside. Strong with the left hand. Can't get it to fall. Rebound comes off to Fowler the other way for Danville Slarman. We're under three minutes left third quarter, tied at 16. Tied at 14, tied at 16. Corner with the ball is Black. That's Shaw Black. Has a little trouble, and now a timeout for Danville. 241 left third quarter, knotted at 16 on Central Illinois Sports. Back after this. The Grigsville Bus Service takes their work seriously. Why? Because Grigsville Bus Service knows you are entrusting them with your most valuable, your children. Grigsville Bus Service is proud to provide transportation each day to and from Grigsville Perry Schools and trips to many extracurricular activities. Just like the Eagles trip to the state tournament, find out more about Grigsville Bus Service today, making each trip the most important one yet. 241 left in the third quarter of play. Trash Queen scoreboard is a 16-16 tie. Serving Pike, Adams, Scott, and Morgan County. Residential, commercial, and roll-off service. 10, 15, and 20-yard roll-off containers. 217-320-4320. It's the Trash Queen. Harrison gets the ball back from Fowler. Now throws it back top of the key to Fowler. Works across the middle. Ball tipped away. Rush with the steal on the larceny. Ninth turnover. Rush down low. Teardrop won't fall there. Howland fighting for it, ball still loose on the floor, still loose on the floor, now Rush comes away with it, it's still down on the floor and the referees aren't stopping the play. Here comes Danville out with it, Beasley with the basketball. Nice head movement there, controlling the basketball, gets it to Harrison. Harrison looks down low, Rush playing right on him with two fouls, gotta be careful. Now Rogers on him in a walking violation, traveling is a 10 turnover on Slarman, their fourth in the second half. 2.05 left third quarter, tied at 16. Thanks for joining us tonight on Central Illinois Sports, a doubleheader. Christ the King and Limestone in the second game for the championship. Rush works the ball to Hunter Brown. Now out to Rogers, gets it back to Brown. In the double team, works it left-hand side to Rogers. Now cross-court, Kaysen Brown. Gets it top of the key, Hunter Brown for a three. In and out, back in. Hunter Brown makes the three, he's got eight. And 19-16 to score. The lead change our fifth of the night. GP with the lead with 135 left third quarter. Ball comes down in the corner to Black. Back out to Harrison. Strong to the bucket. Off the window and good. Harrison's got nine. And he makes it a 19-18 lead. 120 left in the third quarter. GP with a one-point lead in the basketball. Brody Reich will back it out here, trying to win that third place trophy of these two squads, the Eagles and the Hilltoppers. Reich in no hurry with 110 left third quarter. Coach Hansen says, we're in foul trouble. We're not going to be in a hurry here, and I don't blame him. One minute left third quarter. Danville only down by one, so no reason to push the basketball here. Under a minute, down to 55 seconds. GP's fans are clapping with their cheerleaders, trying to keep the momentum going. Under 50 seconds left in the quarter, and I think GP will stand out there and go for one shot. Coach Hanson likes to call the timeout with about 15 seconds left at the end of a quarter. We'll see if he does that. Does not look like Danville's going to do anything but stay back under their head coach, O.J. Harrison. He's shouting instructions from the far side. Rush with 25 seconds left. They're going to try to pick up the charge on Rush if they can. He, Brown, and Brown can hit the three or... Drive down low, Howland would like to have the ball down low and make a layup too. 15 seconds left in the quarter. 19-18 the score, we're under 10. They've held it for a minute and 21 seconds. Now Rush will start the move. Five seconds, Brown, three-pointer out front, in, out, falls away, and the quarter ends with Harrison with a rebound. We played three, GP leads it 19-18 over Danville Slarman. Fourth quarter play-by-play -play in a minute. 
Your locally owned shaved ice business is looking forward to seeing all of our loyal customers this summer. Come try one or all of our over 30 flavors, including sugar free and the snowy natural line, which has no artificial dyes or flavoring. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages to see our schedule. If you want to see us at your event, message us on Facebook or contact us at 217-730-8886. When the weather gets hot, come see us at Midwest Snowy, the cool part of summer. Former State Bank proudly supports the communities it serves, and we wish the Griggsville Perry Eagles the best of luck in the IESA State Tournament. As the area's top-ranked ag bank, we are proud to serve our customers from six locations in Pittsfield, Winchester, Whitehall, Jerseyville, and Hull. Farmers State Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender, saying, Go Eagles! Danville basketball, they trail by one, 19-18. They're 8 of 11 from the field, 0-1 from the arc, 0-1 from the free throw line. GP, 8 of 26 from the field, 2 of 8 from the arc. One of two from the free throw line, Damon Emmerich. Great Rivers Bank here to help you with auto residential commercial loans, 285-4404. Harrison with the basketball. They throw the ball deep in the corner. That's to Richardson. Back to Harrison. Strong off the window, up and good. Harrison's got 11. And eight of those in the second half. Our lead change is the sixth. And it's a 20-19 Danville lead. Rush the other way. Picks up the dribble, needs some help. Back out to Rogers. In the corner, Kaysen Brown. Back to Rush, top of the key. 2019, corner, Kaysen Brown, partially blocked. Rebound, Howland off the window. Won't fall, Howland with the rebound. Puts up the shot and a jump ball. That'll go the way of Griggsville Perry. A lot of contact, no call underneath. Howland was lucky because he went up for the shot and jumped, came back down with the ball. Lucky to not get called for a travel. Into the ball game for Danville comes Perez. He'll sit Richardson down. That's kind of been their one general sub Case, tonight. Casey Brown will inbound the basketball. GP trailing by one. Got to get it in. Get it into Rush. They're going to call a timeout for GP. 518 left in the ball game. 20 to 19 Danville. We're back at 30. When you have a financial question or ideas, you need someone to listen. A professional can listen and help provide insight. Andy Henry of Integrity Investments and Financial Services in Pittsfield can assist you to evaluate your long-term investment and retirement planning approach. Call Andy today to schedule a time to discuss your financial planning and strategy at 217-285-6441. That's 217-285-6441 for Andy Henry and Integrity Investments and financial services. Interesting, only one foul called in the second half of this game. Casey Brown had that one called. He's got three fouls, two on Rush and Howland. They've been that way since the first quarter. Referees were wanting to set the tone early, Jack. Yeah, 518 left in regulation. Brown will inbound it. He needs to get in quicker than he did the last time. Howland breaks. They wait. They wait. He actually moved, and that should have been a violation because he had to stay in one spot. Get it into Rush. Casey Brown, corner, three, in and out, no good. Rebound comes off to BZ the other way. His team leads by one. They've led by a, a couple, 16-14. Shooting for their biggest lead in the corner. Black with it. Gets it down low. Off to Richardson. Up and good. No, no, no. Perez with the basket. Yep. He's got four. Had a guy stand up in front of me, and I could not see. Now Rush with the basketball. Biggest lead of the ball game for Danville right now. In the corner with it is Brown. Works to the basket. Back out top of the key. Rogers for the tray. In and out, no good. Howland with the rebound. Back out to Rogers. Howland with four offensive rebounds. Rush inside. Puts up the runner. It won't fall. Rebound Beasley the other way. Team leads by three. Ball knocked away. Turnover number 11. Rogers with it. Too big a hurry. Needs to pull it back out. Gets it out to Brown. Brown fakes the pass, now gets it to Rush with 4.15 left. Rush backs it back out. Game one of two, we'll take a little break and get ready for the championship game after this one. Brown with it, top of the key. Thanks to all the sponsors for Griggsville Perry, allowing us to bring you the game, like Derek Despain, your LGC dealer. Thank you to Derek. Rush inside, corner, Brown, three, in, out, no good. Ball tipped to Hallam. Back out, Rogers tries the three, it's no good. Howland with his sixth offensive rebound. Down to Hunter Brown, up and good. 
Hunter Brown's got 10, makes it a 22-21 game in favor of Danville Slarman. The Hilltoppers, front court Fowler, corner Black, back out to Harrison, fakes it in the lane, down to Beasley, and a timeout for Danville Slarman. He yeah. calls the timeout. They're going to have to give it to him. They can't just stop play. You, you no. can't just stop playing and well, he not was give in the a three timeout. Second situation. Oh, my. They're going to keep play going and give the ball back Ooh. to Slarman there. I think Slarman might have caught a break that time. Yeah. I, Coach stood up, and the referee thought he called a timeout. And they killed the play. Now they're going to try to let a substitute come well, in. Wait, wait, that's, wait. That's something you should not be able to do. Now they're going to put uh, Caden Richardson in and take B, uh, Perez out. Shouldn't be able to substitute when the referee on an inadvertent whistle. Let's see what they're going to do. Two referees talking to the scorer's table. A lot of conversation going on here. Neither one of them's name's Dave. 329 left in regulation. 22-21 Slarman. After that conversation, what are we going to do? Not much of anything, but give the ball to Slarman. Interesting. They'll inbound the ball underneath the big scoreboard in on the baseline. That'll be Shaw Black inbounding it. He'll get it into Harrison. Work it into the corner, out of the double team. Back out to Black, back to Harrison. He scored seven points in the quarter. Rush with the larceny. Basket up, good. Rush takes the lead for his team on the larceny on the 12th turnover. Rush with another two, he's got 13. Into the double team, they get it to Harrison. Down to Beasley. Fakes, strong to the basket, misses the shot. Rebound comes off to Shaw Black. Top of the key, ball knocked away. Rogers knocked to his feet. Ball goes to the backcourt and Harrison's got it. A lot of contact, no call there. Ball knocked out of bounds by Cason Brown. 2.53 left. Kind of went off Cason Brown's head. 22, the lead for Grigsville Perry. 30-second timeout for Danville back after this. Project Management is a licensed, bonded, and insured roofing company owned by Darren Workman. We specialize in all types of roofing from shingles, metal roofs, commercial, industrial, and residential roofing. Book your roof project early before the price increase hits. Call 217-371-2760 or find us on Facebook as well. DNL Project Management, roofing their way on top of your home or business. 217-371-2760. Pike County Concrete, when you need concrete for your next job, give Pike County Concrete a call, 285-5548 in Pittsfield and Jacksonville, and then call Waters Concrete at 309-252-1052 for Tim Waters. He'll help you pour that concrete and make it look great. 253 left in regulation, 23-22. GP with the lead, Harrison with the basketball for Slarman after the timeout. To Fowler, back to Harrison. Harrison works across the middle. Rice picked his pocket a moment ago. In the corner is Richardson. He's going to be fouled on the play by Rogers, I do believe. That'll be Rogers first and the team second of the second half. It'll be ball out of bounds on the sideline right in front of the Schlarman bench. No fouls called on Danville, only two on Grigsville Perry, four on Schlarman in the game. Harrison with the basketball, top of the key, 240 left in regulation. Fowler gets the ball in the corner to Black. He takes a step, and they don't call that. Now they get it down to Harrison. Tie up in the middle. Down to Beasley. Shot up, won't fall. Rebound fought for. Harrison's got the rebound on the floor. Ball comes loose, and Brown comes away with it. That's Hunter Brown. No rebound, no turnover. 219 left in the contest. One-point lead for Grigsville Perry. 23-22 on Central Illinois Sports. Rush with the ball. He's got Harrison on him. Now they start the five count. Behind the back dribble. I don't know why he stopped the count because Harrison backed off, I yep. guess. Two minutes left. Rush with the basketball. Works it left-hand side. Now he'll back it back out. Under two minutes left in the contest. Rush will back it out. His team leads 23-22. GP was not a good free throw shooting team last Saturday, so I don't know what would happen, but you know, here's the thing. Slarman has to foul seven times to put him to the line. They have no fouls called on him with 135 left. Rush works across the middle. He's just putting on a curly kneel from the Globetrotters dribbling exhibition. Now the double team. They'll get it into Hunter Brown in the corner. Brown works out of the double team. He'll maintain possession. Get it back to Rush. Rush pushed hit. into the backcourt into the double team and a timeout for Grigsville Perry. A one minute timeout with 117 left. 
23-22. GP with the lead over Danville. Back in a minute. A&D Builders, owned and operated by Anthony and Afton Barreyes, is located in Barry, Illinois. They specialize in building homes in Pike County and the eastern Missouri Hannibal area. A&D focus on new builds but offer remodels, including siding and room remodels. They also offer creative home designs where they draft custom homes. In addition, they do in-ground pool installation. While others are two to three years out, call A&D and you will see they can get to your project right away. Phone 217-440-5930 for A&D Builders making your dreams real for you. Farmers, are you looking for high-yield genetics to help the bottom line on your farm? Contact Lipkeman Seed Sales for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. We have the luxury right now to be offering the highest-yielding soybean lineup Pioneer has offered in 30 years. Couple that with the service that is second to none, and you have a winning combination for your farm. For corn, check out the results of the National Corn Growers Yield Contact and see who's at the top. Maybe today is a good day to revisit Pioneer corn hybrids as well. Contact Aaron, Evan, and Brett today for high-yielding A-Series soybeans for Pioneer. Griggsville Perry will have the basketball, 117 left in regulation, leading by one. Rush will be the man taking the ball out of bounds. That's a bit of a surprise for me. Brown in the backcourt. They'll get it to Kaysen Brown, and he'll stay in the backcourt. Now, you got to remember, he's got to get it in the frontcourt in 10 seconds. Now, Rush gets it across the timeline. Out of the double team, throws it over to Kaysen Brown. We're at the 105 mark. Down to a minute. Brown with the ball, fakes the pass. Now he'll dribble out of it, looking for Rush. I would Finds him I'd out be top super of the aggressive. Six, uh, 58 seconds left. Now to Hunter Brown. Now they'll foul. That'll be the first foul of the second half on Slarman. That will go against Black. Shaw Black picks up his first, first team foul. They got to foul six more times. 53 seconds left in the game. Inbounding the ball will be Casey Brown. I mean, GP has to inbound it six more times, too. Yep. you got to foul each and every time you can. Now they're having trouble getting it in. Close to five, and that's a five count. They're going to call the five thought count. he called the timeout, but they didn't get it. That's a turnover on GP. They're four. Got fans running all over the stadium right now instead of sitting in their seats. 53 it's seconds left. They're excited, Jack. They're yeah. excited. Beasley gets the ball into Harrison. One-point game, 23-22. GP, ball knocked away, and the ball goes off of GP out of bounds. It'll remain Slarman basketball. I thought Harrison may have been the one to tip that out, you were actually, wrong. but okay. you were wrong. Now they blow the horn. Why do you blow the horn in that situation? They had a sub. Oh, sub comes in, Richardson in, Perez out. 47.1 seconds left. Beasley wants to inbound it to Harrison, gets it into him in the backcourt. GP's only fouled twice. They can be aggressive, too. Ball knocked away, taken away by Rush. Coast to coast, Harrison fouls him. That's intentional. That's intentional foul, They're going to call the intentional foul on Harrison as he just body blocked him into the sideline, and that means Rush will shoot two and get the basketball back. So that's uh, Harrison's first, team second of the second half. Excuse me, Harrison's second yep. against Schlarman. 38.8 seconds left in regulation, 23-22. Yep. Rush uh, just needs to make the free throws here, and he can really seal the game away almost. This first is up and too long, no good. One for three from the free throw line is Rush on the night. He'll be shooting the second here. Um, we've got a sub coming in. What are we doing here, kids? You can't really bring a sub in in that situation, but okay. Why can't you? Because you've got to wait until they administer the ball. Second is up, and it is good. Makes it 24-22 now, Gregsville Perry, on the Trash Queen scoreboard. Rush with 14. They're going to get the ball underneath the basket now also. 38.8 seconds left. Danville's got to foul five more times to put them to the free throw line. But they got to foul once to make them inbound it again after this. And they had so. a five-second call just moments ago. Now they're going to have Hunter Brown inbound the ball. He'll be able to see a little bit better over Beasley, but the big man in Beasley is... Protect it. Now they get it into Rush. They'll foul Rush. That'll go against Shaw Black. That'll be his second, team foul number three. His second, team third. That took almost two seconds off the clock. 36.2 seconds left. But once again, John, like you said, they got to inbound. 24 22, Griggsville Perry with the basketball. Payson Brown gets it into Rush. He's got Harrison on him in the backcourt. 
Fakes it a couple of times, gets it across the timeline. Now Harrison will put both hands on him, and that'll be a foul on Harrison. What, his second? It's his third, actually, okay. team fourth. 30.7 seconds left. If There's Allen had break to the basket, he'd be wide open. He probably would. You're not wrong. They're going to have Cason Brown inbound it. He's the one that's had a little trouble getting it in. The end of the backcourt, looking, 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 misses the man, timeout. And Griggsville Perry calls the timeout. 30.7 seconds left in regulation. 24-22, Griggsville Perry over Danville Slarman back after this. Rumors have it Barn Grill in Griggsville is located at 115 West Quincy Street in Griggsville, of course. Locally owned and operated Monday through Thursday plus Saturday. Kitchen is open 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday an hour later till 9 and Sunday 1 to 6. Carryout is welcome. Call 217-833-2000. Mushrooms, great onion rings, jalapeno poppers, plus more. Great salads, sandwiches, hand-padded burgers, wraps, horseshoes, pulled pork. Rumors have it there's even more in Griggsville on the south side of the main drag. 24-22, Griggsville Perry with the lead. They were at a four and a half count when they called the timeout again. Had one five count and called two timeouts. I think they got a couple of timeouts left, if I'm not mistaken. 14 fouls on Danville, two on Griggsville Perry. So Danville's got a foul three more times to put him on the line. GP had trouble with free throws the other day. Let's see who's going to take the ball out for Griggsville Perry. It's going to be Hunter Brown. Rush is two of four from the free throw Rush line. is wide open underneath it, uh, and they gave him the ball. Now they'll give the ball. Get the ball to Rush. Nope, Harrison's going to steal it away. Drive to the basket. Rush ball goes out, out of bounds. And it'll remain Danville ball on the turnover by GP. Nice job by Harrison. Rush did a heck of a job knocking the ball away, though. Yep, Harrison was going to make the layup and tie the game. Two-point game, 26.6 seconds left. Danville with the basketball under their own basket. Harrison trying to get open. They get the ball out front to Fowler, and Danville calls the timeout before it comes in. 26 seconds left, 24, 22. GP with the lead, back after this. Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple. Local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fmbgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, local people helping local people, member FDIC. Twenty four twenty two Griggsville Perry. It was nineteen eighteen in favor of Griggsville Perry at the end of the third quarter. So Griggsville Perry has scored five and given up four in the fourth quarter. Danville will have the basketball underneath their own basket. GP on the defensive side. Nobody close to the one and one here, so you can foul on either side if you want to. They can be can be super aggressive. Inbounding the ball will be Black. Gets it in to Harrison. Harrison tries baseline, throws it across the middle. Ball loose on the floor, down. Why didn't the clock start? Why, why the did clock they? did not start. 26 seconds, and the clock did not run during that whole series. You got to do something with the time there, folks, because the board did not get the clock started. That was at least six to eight seconds that they had the ball there. Wondering if they were having an issue with the clock there, maybe. You got to take some time off the clock here, boys. I would think. Let's see what's going to happen here. We're going to keep it right here and try to get it figured out. 24-22, <laughs> they're going to bring both teams to the sidelines. Matt Hansen was at the scorer's table saying, start the clock, start the clock, start the clock. And nothing was happening. In a state championship third and fourth place game, so get the, it fixed, folks. The, get the it jump fixed. ball happened, so whose ball is it's it? It's still Danville's ball after the jump ball, so the next possession will go to Griggsville Perry. Had a look underneath. Fowler couldn't handle it, but he went down to the floor to keep possession, as did the GP kids. Were you surprised Harrison gave the ball up? Because I was. I, I figured He's he'd be a driving. He's a sixth grader. I don't oh, know. I know. I just figured he'd be driving no, right to the basket. I'm not going to overthink any of that with a sixth grade kid. 22 seconds left, they say. That only took four seconds. It's probably not that 24, far 24-22. John, Mr. Agreeable tonight. 
Grigsville with the lead. If you get the foul and they make a basket in the end one, you can give up the lead. Harrison out front, Rice knocks it away, Harrison recovers. He's got the ball with 19-18, Rush on him, and Rush will pick up the foul. That'll be Rush's third, team third to the second half. It'll be ball out of bounds, and again, like we talked about, that means Danville has to inbound the ball again. But you don't want to get major foul trouble and happen to go into overtime. No, that's true. Beasley will inbound it. Harrison will get it in the backcourt with 17 seconds left. Down to 14, he breaks away from Rice, across the middle, strong to the basket, back out for a two-pointer for the tie, no good, rebound fought for, Harrison's got it, shot up and good, three seconds left, and we're tied at 24, and they didn't get the timeout, we're gonna go to overtime. 24-24 in regulation, I thought GP would call the timeout, but they did not and we will go to a three-minute overtime in the third and fourth place game. A late start tonight, but we're going to play extra. We'll take the time out. Overtime comes your way after this. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting, so it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit, so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Three minutes on the clock in overtime for the third and fourth place game. You think they don't care? Slarman scored the last basket. We've been tied at 14, 16, and now at 24. Six lead changes in the game. 12 turnovers on Slarman, five on GP, Gregsville Perry. Slarman's 11 of 17 from the field, 0 of 1 from the arc, 0 of 1 from the free throw line. Gregsville Perry's had their chances, 10 of 35 on the night, 2 of 13 from the arc, 2 of 4 from the free throw line. Brody Rush has 14 on the other side, 11 for C.J. Harrison, who was a McCulloch early in the game, but we found out that he goes by Harrison. Will jump the ball, Hallen will jump against Beasley, Last time GP got the jump, even though Beasley might have been the man that got higher. Everybody's away from the circle. Three minutes on the clock and the man's moving. They should have called a violation, but did not. Rush will have the basketball for Grigsville Perry. He'll get the ball to Cason Brown. Grigsville Perry has not run a lot of offense in the last quarter. They get the ball to Rush. Works across the middle, cut off there. Back out to Rogers. Bounce pass out front to Hunter Brown. Little reverse dribble. Needs to find an opening. Finds Rush out front with 235 left. Dangerous pass to Cason Brown. Brown runs it down. Maintains the dribble. Cason Brown's been tied up tonight by the good defense of Danville Slarman. Down to 220. Now Rush will back it back out. Works off the pit. Works it on the right side. Backs it out. Gets a little space. Across the middle. Fakes it. Picks up the dribble. Back out to Hunter Brown. Rush trying to get open. Ball knocked out of bounds by Danville's Black, and it'll remain GP basketball. 2.07 left in overtime, 24-24. Rush will get the inbounds pass from Hunter Brown. He'll take it back out top of the key. We got another game coming your way after this one. Don't go away, folks. Championship action after the third and fourth place game. Rogers with the ball, gets it out to Brown, now out to Rush, across the middle, cut off. Brown thinks about the three, back out to Rush, top of the key. 145 left, GP's had the ball for the first minute and 20 seconds. Rush inside, long step, up and good. Rush might have got way up with steps, but he gets his team the lead, 26-24. Now Harrison the other way with 125 left. Out of the double team, gets it to Fowler, has trouble with it, steps on the baseline, and Danville will turn it over for the 13th time tonight. Had trouble with the or catch. That was Perez, by yeah, mistake. Had trouble with the catch and then kind of rolled over the ball as he sat down with the ball on it. Break to the basket, guys. Break to the basket. There it is. Brown's got to get it in. Finally does to Hunter Brown. He's moving on the sideline there and really isn't allowed to do that, and that's what their coach is saying. Brody Rush with the basketball with 1.15 left, his team up by two. 
14 fouls on Danville, three on Griggsville Perry, nobody in the bonus, and a foul will be called on Shaw Black, his third. That'll be Black's third and the uh, team fifth. It'll be ball out of bounds. You cannot move when they hand you the ball. That should have been called traveling about three times tonight. Now back into the game comes Caden Richardson. He'll take Perez out if the normal break is that way. Yep, Perez comes out of the game. 106 left. GP with the two-point lead in the basketball. If I'm Danville, I'm going to foul. They need to foul two more times to get the one and one. Hallen wide open. Hallen says, give me the ball. Now GP will call the timeout. 106 left. 26-24, Griggsville Perry with the lead. We'll be back in 30. No matter who wins today, you can be on the winning team. Discover a job where your pay, job security, and safety are our top priorities. At DOT, our material handlers and drivers earn some of the best money in the market. Plus, we top that off with gold-based pay opportunities, profit sharing, vacation time, 401k matching, and more. Make your fantasy team a reality. Join DOT today. 106 left in overtime, in the first overtime, I should tell you. 26-24, Griggsville Perry with the lead. They'll also have the basketball after the timeout. They should have two left because they get an extra one in the overtime, I do believe. I think that's right. Nothing on the scoreboard to tell us that. Hunter Brown will be the inbound man. They want to get the ball to Rush and Casey Brown, and they refuse to get it to anybody else. Close to five a couple of times. Talent is literally wide open right now. He is. Now Rush tries to break open. They throw the ball in the middle. Howland gets it, gets it to Rogers, goes to the basket, partially blocked. Rush with the rebound. On the dribble. He's got black on him. Now two hands on him. No call. They get it down to Howland. Shot up too hard. Howland gets the rebound. Ball loose. Rogers fighting for it. Should be Griggsville Perry basketball, I do believe. Yep, jump ball. No, no, Griggsville Perry yep. won the jump. Yep. It'll be. Danville's basketball. Correct. 47.3 seconds left, 26-24 in the first overtime. Beasley will inbound the ball to Harrison. Harrison will bring it slowly across the timeline with Rush on him. And now they'll call a timeout. 40.6 seconds left in overtime, 26-24 GP back after this. Midwest Snowy, your locally owned shaved ice business, is looking forward to seeing all of our loyal customers this summer. Come try one or all of our over 30 flavors, including sugar-free and the Snowy Natural line, which has no artificial dyes or flavoring. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages to see our schedule. If you want to see us at your event, message us on Facebook or contact us at 217-730-8886. When the weather gets hot, come see us at Midwest Snowy. The cool part of summer. J.K. Woodshop and Taxidermy. That's Jeff Caspery, 217-440-8900. Check him out on Facebook at J.K. Woodshop and Taxidermy. Also, Derek Despain, LG Seeds. Proud of the team. What a great season. And let's hang on here, he says. I want to thank all of our sponsors. Stay tuned for the postgame show, Illini Community Hospital postgame show, and the Derek Harris, Edward Jones, financial advisor, player of the game. Christ Queen scoreboard, 26-24 GP, but Danville's got the basketball with 40.6 seconds left in the first overtime. They've called the timeout. I think each team has a couple of timeouts left. Beasley gets the ball into Harrison. Rush knocks it away, but Harrison will run it down. Works it in the front court. Rush has got three fouls on him. Corner, it comes to Richardson. Looks inside, and a travel. Turnover, the 14th of the game against Danville as Richardson just picked up the pivot foot. And the Danville people are going, how can you call that now? Now the guy with the beard is uh, upset, and he's going down in front of the scorer's bench. I think he's going to go out and outside. I think he's leaving. Yep, I think he needs to get outside before he loses his cool. Brown will inbound it. That's Hunter Brown. Looking, looking, looking. Bounce the ball to the man that's open, and now... Herfman comes in and just bounces the ball out of bounds right by Rush. That'll be a turnover on GP. They're sixth. Folks, these are sixth and seventh graders. Everybody relax. They're little kids. <laughs> 28.6 seconds left in overtime. 26-24. Danville's got a shot. Everyone is very excited. Yeah. Beasley gets the ball into Harrison. 
Harrison wants to find Beasley. He does down low, up off the window, won't fall, rebound. Jump ball, alternating possession, GP, Hunter Brown, and Beasley come down with it, and Greeksville Perry's got the arrow. 22.1 seconds left in overtime. Full court pressure. You got too many coaches out of up in the way right now. Hunter Brown's going to take the ball out now. I tell you what, Danville plays good defense in this situation. Now a foul on the play. That'll be Beasley's, I believe. I think they're going to call it on Harrison. Nope, it, Beasley. Beasley, it'll be his first, I believe, correct? Yep, his first. Team, Team six. six. Now they can put him into one and one with a foul. And what are we going to do now? I think we have a sub. Kerfman, both the Browns, Rodgers and Rush. No howling out there right now. They got their free throw shooters out. What are we talking about? Two, four, 20 five. 20.5 two, five seconds five. left in overtime. 26-24. Each team's got five guys, okay. Coach, right. get back. Get out of the way. Beasley was called for the foul, 16 Six. foul. So Danville can foul now and put the man on the free throw line. Nobody breaking to get to the ball. Now Rush has it. Black, or Black running him down, he'll foul it. And they didn't start the clock again. Wow. What is going the on The clock with that? did not run that whole time. And, that's and you're in a one-and-one one. One situation. One-and-one one situation. Yeah, one-and-one one situation. Yeah, it's, it's one-and-one. One. That's the seventh foul. I mean, the, the board. One-and-one. One. It could be one-and-one. One. Fouls on uh, one, Shaw one, Black. One-and-one. One-and-one. One. There we go. There we one go. referee seventh, figures it out. They, seventh free throw. They, <laughs> they needed to run four seconds off the clock, and they did not. But they did not start the clock. Wow, they have had an awful lot of trouble with that yeah, clock that tonight. Yeah, that clock has not been running in the scores. Now. And now Danville wants a timeout. But hang on a second before you give him the timeout. Now it's down to 17.5 seconds. Okay, there we go. They ran They're three making, seconds off. 26 point, 26, 24, and Danville wants a timeout. Take a 30, John. 26, 24, GP shooting free throws when we come back. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Welcome back. Damon Emmerich at Great Rivers Bank here to help you with auto residential and commercial loan needs. Call Damon at 217-285-4404. And the Pike County Express, your local family-owned newspaper, serving Pike County since 1991. Check out the paper that just came out on Wednesday. It's Thursday. Grab a copy right now. And Bowler's Universe, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday, 4 to midnight. Great food, craft beers, and more. Open bowling on the weekends. Check them out. It'll be free throws for Rush. He'll shoot the one and one. I've got him uh, two of four. Two of four on the day. He's yep. got all the free throws. Yep. 26-24. He can make this a two possession game if he can make them both. Shooting but one and one is that told You want to make one of them, and the one that you got to make is the first one. Everybody in the stands, tell them to box out. Where have I heard that before? No one does it still. Fresh shot is up. And too long, no good. Rebound comes down to Harrison. Harrison with 15 seconds left. He wants to go coast to coast if he can. Takes it in the middle. Might have got by with steps. Beasley puts up the shot. No good. And he'll shoot two free throws. It's he's foul going to the basket with 7.9 seconds left. And who's the foul on? Well, the man that I saw his hand signals is definitely not in the game. Rogers. So that's going to be against uh, Rogers. Rogers. His second. Team fourth. Two free throws for Beasley. He can tie the game up with 7.9 seconds left. He'll shoot two. Takes a deep breath, eyes, spins the ball, dribbles it again, eyes the bucket up with the first, and he is way short. No good. I was yeah. afraid he was going to miss the, light, the uh, rim o even. But. 0 for 2 on the night is Beasley. Has two points. He's Allen the, into the game. Kirkman sits down. He's the only man to shoot free throws on the evening for uh, Schlarman. 
Yep, they have not made either free throw they attempted. Now they're going to try to make it a one-point game. And his second oh is up gosh. and too long, no good. Tried to miss it on purpose. Oh, they're going to give it back to Danville. I'll be darned. A whole second did run off the clock, yep, though. 6.5 seconds left. Beasley misses them both. He missed that one on purpose. He did because he knew he didn't didn't yeah. think he could make now, it. And Shaw Black's going to inbound it. Harrison trying to get open. Trying to get open, trying to get open. They throw it out front. Harrison with a catch. Works against Rush. Four, three, throws up a three-pointer. It don't fall. Beasley rebound up and good. And we will go to the second overtime. Tied at 26 apiece. As the basket goes in, as the horn goes off, we'll take the break. Second overtime comes your way after this. For delicious, authentic Italian pizza and pasta, it's Gianni's Pizza on the square in Pittsfield. From delicious appetizers to a wide selection of specialty pizzas and pastas, Gianni's has something everyone will enjoy. Take advantage of the Gianni's Pizza Special, where you can order any extra-large pizza and receive a free, small, one-topping pizza. For carryout or delivery, call 285-4002. That's 285-4002 for Gianni's Pizza on the square in Pittsfield. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer is excited to support this broadcast of State Tournament Action. Representative Davidsmeyer is honored to serve our area as your state representative. He cares about the people in his district and works hard to hear your voice. C.D. welcomes you to reach his office in Jacksonville at 325 West State Street or give him a call at 217-243-6221. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer wishing you good luck in your run to the title. Paid for by C.D. Davidsmeyer for re-election to the Illinois legislature. Each team gets another timeout, so each should have three, I think, and Danville may be down to two. 26-26, one basket scored each way. Danville's came with two-tenths of a second. Jump ball, and they blow the horn Why did we blow the horn? jump ball. Who knows why? Anyway, Danville's got the ball. There's been a lot of technical problems here tonight at East Peoria. That's a shame. Ball knocked out of bounds as Casey Brown knocks it out. This Four team fouls on Grigsville, seven on Danville, one and one for Grigsville, but they can give up a couple of fouls before another one will happen. Now into the game comes Richardson, and Perez will step out. This is the place that hosts this tournament most of the time. So Yeah, they've had a lot of problems tonight with that clock. Wow. Much problems that they had. That last two seconds was a probably a little bit of a gift. Fowler with it, ball knocked away. Fowler gets it back into the double team. He'll be fouled by Rush, and that'll be Rush's fourth. Rush's fourth, team fifth. Yep. Now inbounding the ball is Beasley. He'll get it into Harrison with 2.40 left. Tie ball game at 26. Rush has to be careful. Ball comes across, Rogers had it, ball loose. Harrison's got it, tips it down low to Richardson. Little shake and bake, down to Beasley, nice pass, Beasley up and good. Nice pass by Richardson, 28, 26, lead change number eight. Now Rush has the basketball, works off of a pick from Hallen. Inside, Rush, shot up, count the bucket, and he'll go to the free throw line with a chance to give us another lead change. And we're tied at 28 on the Trash Queens scoreboard. Rush has 18 of his team's 28. Rush on the night, two for four or two for five? Uh, and that foul going to go against Harrison, his fourth, yep. and the team eighth. Ooh, Harrison with four also. Rush yep. with the free throw. The lefty puts it up and can't get it to fall. Ball tipped away. Hunter Brown with it. Now Rush has it. Back in the corner to Brown. Back to Rush. Tied at 28. 205 left in the contest. Rush just two for six from the free throw line, but no bigger rebound than the one from Hunter Brown that time. Rush inside, ball is Ooh. blocked out of bounds by Beasley. A lot of contact there. Yeah, but it was, could have been a blocked shot. Could have actually went off a rush. Every time Greensville takes the ball out of bounds, it's dangerous. Rush tries to break open. They refuse to throw the ball to anybody else. Finally, they get it into Rush with under two minutes left. Into the double team, he'll back out of it. Harrison playing with four fouls on him. Now, Black will guard it. Black's got three or four. Three, I believe. Close to five. They keep counting now. They bounce it over in the corner. Black goes flying as he loses his footing with 135 left. 
Rush with the basketball. Now they'll start the five count. Now they'll back it off again. Brown tries to set the pick. He does with 125 left. Second overtime. Working off of a pick. Rush maintains the dribble. 115 left. These kids have played a lot of basketball this year. They only have one eighth grader at Griggsville Perry, so they've had to play both games every night. 109 in counting. We'll be down the one minute mark, and nobody's going to come out and play D yet. Harrison will stay back. He's playing with four fouls. Rush with four fouls. Now Black comes out to guard Rush. No, that's Richardson, I should say. 52 seconds left. They start to count. Now they'll restart it. Now they'll start it again. You better be careful. That guy will call a five count on you, son. Backs off. No count going now. 40 seconds. Maintains the count. He's at three. Now he's at four. Now he changes it again. Rush needs to get rid of it. Timeout. Griggsville Perry. 30.8 seconds left. Tied at 28. Second overtime. We're back in 30. The East Pike Lending Library is the little gold mine in Detroit, Illinois that you may not know about. They offer free, yes, free books for your pleasure. East Pike Lending Library is funded by area donations from friends. There's no charge ever for you to take a book and enjoy it. Presently, they are not taking book donations as they are blessed with way too many books. That means you need to stop by soon. The East Pike Lending Library is run by volunteers, and that just might be you. Come in as a stranger, leave as a friend at the East Pike Lending Library in Detroit. 28-28, double overtime. Right now, 30.8 seconds left. Griggsville Perry's got the basketball. If you look at it, four fouls on Rush, four on Harrison on the other side, the two leading scorers in the game. May come down to who fouls out first. But Each team eight, scored. eight team fouls on Danville, so a one and one on the other side, just five on Griggsville Perry. Each team has scored two points in the uh, first overtime, two points in this overtime. Griggsville Perry has had the heck of a time getting the ball in bounds. Even when they've had guys wide open, they've refused to throw them the ball. Now they get it to Case and Brown. He'll hand it off to Rush in the backcourt. 25 seconds left. He's got Perez on him. Perez trying to play the D. Rush across the middle, 18-17. Now he'll work across the middle with 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Rush go with the basketball. 6, 5, 4, corner, Brown for the win. Yes! Yes! It is good, and Kaysen Brown hits the three to give his team a 31-28 double overtime win. Griggsville Perry, the third place team in the state. Danville not far behind at fourth. We'll take a break and wrap it up after this in one minute. Hi, I'm Barry Wearies. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here at Blessing. In the dream world, I would have loved to have been a Major League Baseball player. <laughs> this job has been so satisfying. When I do a total knee or a total hip replacement on a patient, it is so fulfilling to improve their quality of life. They can do things now that they couldn't do before the surgery. And when they're in the office and they're very appreciative, it makes me feel that I'm doing uh, the Lord's work. What a game, double overtime. 31-28 on a three-pointer at the buzzer by Kaysen Brown. By the way, his only basket of the game right there. Turnover, six on Griggsville Perry, 14 on Danville. Nobody fouled out of the game. 9-5 after one, Griggsville Perry, 14-9 at half, 19-18 after three quarters. Tied at 24 after one break, 26 after two, 28-28, and then the three-pointer went in by Kaysen Brown, and that's the winner. C.J. McCulloch had 11 points, eight of those in the second half for Danville, one for Noah Fowler, four points for Amir Beasley on the night, four for Adam Perez off the bench, two for Caden Richardson, and two for Shaw Black. On the other side, Brody Rush led the way with 18 points, 10 points for Hunter Brown, Kaysen Brown with a three at the end of the game, and that's the winner. This is the Illini Community Hospital postgame show. Illini Community Hospital celebrating 80 years 40, since 1942, excellent health care from primary specialty care, emergency medicine, Illini here to serve you and your family. Learn more about their services at IlliniHospital.org. 
It is time for us to name our player of the game. Financial investments are important, but so are the investments of time, patience, encouragement. Our young athletes receive from coaches, parents, teachers, and mentors. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones representative for your financial advisor, understands this. That's why Derek Harris is a proud sponsor of the player of the game on Central Illinois Sports. Player of the game, sure, Brody Rush did it all, but we're going to give it to the man who made the winner, Kaysen Brown, his only three of the night. Little man with a big heart and a big three-pointer from 19-9. His team wins it, 31-28. Couldn't have been here without our sponsors. Listen to them on the post game. Also want to thank Derek Despain, your LGC dealer, proud of the Eagles, and j k Woodshop and Taxidermy, specializing in custom display cabinets and items mostly made from wood. Jeff Caspery, 217-440-8900. Check him out on Facebook, and maybe you can get those replica trophies for your team. We're going to take a break. We'll have the championship game for you in just a little while. Winner, Grigsville Perry in double overtime, 31 to 28. Just to let people know, we uh, what I'm planning to do is leave this up just so people can see the uh, trophy presentation. You can see the trophy presentation. We're going to take a break. Some of us need to take a pause for the cause. We'll see you in just a little while. Good job, Eagles and the Hilltoppers of Danville Slark. We hope you've enjoyed today's broadcast of Grigsville Perry Eagles State Tournament Run. This game could not have happened without the following. Teddy's Bar and Grill. Waters Concrete, Dot Foods Incorporated, Gianni's Pizza, Musgrave Angus Premium Beef, Lipcomen Insurance, Lipcomen Seat Sales, The City of Griggsville, Griggsville Bus Service, Farmers State Bank, Wildcat Car Wash, Gina, Corey, Mariska, and Dalton Sherman, Midwest Snowy, Integrity Investments, Andy Henry, Rumors Have It, Damon Emmerich, Great Rivers Bank, a and D Builders, Anthony and Afton Barreyes, DNL Project Management, Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, Beard Implement Company, East Pike Lending Library. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast, and way to go, Eagles.